What's going on everybody? It's Childish, you're back out of the game, coming at you with another Summoner's War video. As you guys know, not even 10 days from now is gonna be the SWC World Finals, it's gonna be going down, I believe, November 12th at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And as we always do, we're gonna be doing a little giveaway for you guys, a prediction giveaway to see if you guys can predict the future to decide who's gonna be the 2021 SWC World Champion. But don't you guys worry, I'm gonna uh, help you out. I got a secret rap uh, by the name of Once in Love, tuned in with me here to, uh, to give you guys the inside scoop on the players and you know his his prediction uh, coming into this event. Once in love, how are we doing today? We're doing good, boss. Good to see you. Glad to be here. It's always great to be back on it's the channel. I hope you guys great. are all doing well. Yeah, yeah. It's always great to have you here again. I just every single time I sit here collab, I just have to bring back that memory of the of the educate and dominate operation mid game here. One of our favorite uh, series that we made on the channel, the one that gets so much love. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you here, my man. Gosh, we got we got to do some more of that. Look stuff, where man. we are now. I know, right? And now we we're here. It. Many years later, <laughs> we made it. We're I'm still casting here. SWC now. That's crazy, man. Congratulations once again on that. The first thing we have is the bracket. So in the bracket, it was drawn in Korea. Uh, link to the video will be below if you guys want to see them drawing it. Um, there was a point where they had to redraw one of the contestants because they didn't want uh, two contenders of the same region fighting each other in the first round, which is how they do it normally. There's a high seed and a low seed, so whoever won the tournament and then whoever came second or third place. Um, I believe what it was is Pinkroid was drawn to play against Izmu, but they didn't want an EU-EU first right, round right. because traditionally SWC World Finals has never been like that. So Pinkroid is actually now fighting second baby and Izmu will be fighting Tars. So in the quarterfinals on our high seed, we have Big V facing off against Jack. Big V was our first place in America's Cup, Jack being third place in APAC. We have Pinkroid fighting second baby. Pinkroid first, uh, first place in Europe Cup, second baby getting second place in APAC. We have Diligent, Diligent getting first place in APAC versus Madreem getting second place in Americas. And then we have Tars, who won the China selection tournament, I believe. Right. China selection match, essentially first place for that region versus Izmu, our second place for Europe. So to start off, let's go. I'll go all high seed first. So let's talk okay. about the high seed brackets. So Big V, Americas region. Big V is known as the fastest. <laughs> Big, Big V is insanely fast big yeah. v is wild the way he plays the game is different it he has his own way to do things right he's got that tablet Meyer nikki cleave he also ran that miles uh the miles mostly free to play comp with the miles into the nefties gianna like he has all these super crazy unique ways to play the game mm -hmm. and he is extremely effective at countering and building for his opponents he does his homework super well yeah. i think big v i i'm cheering for big v right. personally you know america's region i think big v is an incredible player and i love the way he approaches the game okay now we got fan favorite pink Roid. i'd say our two fan favorites here gotta be pink Roid and diligent but mm -hmm. we'll talk about pink Roid first pink Roid, eu cup very 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 prominent twitch streamer does a lot of uh, wings at the end of the season to showcase a lot of different strengths on different accounts he is incredible his first turn ability is really strong he's very strong tian lane user but also knows how to utilize other monsters outside of the common meta very effectively. As you saw in Europe Cup, he used the Chow. He's got that 270 Violent Nem Chow that was speed tuned to his whole team for that snipe comp. It was incredible. The way he used that Chow with the speed as well as the damage really just locked a GG match in once the draft came through. Right? He has the ability to pick Tian Lang, so he's very good against Diana's. He's good against the Oracle setups. But he also utilizes those Oracle setups really well. We've seen him use that Sierra, Molong, Juno very effectively to take out a unit on the first turn at high speeds. He utilizes the Sekhmet as well, so he's adapting to the meta as it comes along. So Pinkroid is definitely a good contender to look out for. Diligent. Diligent is probably going to be the most favored in the tournament. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, Diligent is and probably has some of the best runes in the entire game. Uh, some of the best runes, best artifacts. His okay. units are incredible. His water Ryu is a swift crit damage build. You saw how much damage it was dealing in APAC Cup. He 3-0'd second baby in the finals of APAC Cup. He was super clean. In his last match, he pulled a Volantis out in his draft that nobody had ever seen before. You know, he has some of the scariest units in the game. We're talking about Volantis. We're talking about, I believe he's Tian Lang and a Gianna as well. Like, yeah. we're talking about somebody who has a huge deep box of meta relevant units that also has insane runes and artifacts. Yeah. Diligent is probably the favored uh, contender for this tournament. Yeah. Okay. He kind of reminds me of Pog. Tiger. He kind of reminds me of Tiger just with better runes. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of. So he, he kind of reminds me of Tiger in the way that he like plays the game and he was able to like draft against each other. But the thing is, Diligent 
plays so well in tournament yeah. settings, too, right? He is calm and collected, and he's very good at adapting his draft, realizing what the small error is or the weakest point is, and just eliminating it entirely. Yeah. Um, fourth, we have Tars. So Tars, China Selection Tournament. Um, no, I don't know too much about Tars. I know he has incredible runes. I know he uses a Tian Lang effectively. I know he's very scared of Lulu. But, um, you know, that's a good thing for him because Lulu got nerfed, so the Violent right. Procs aren't as strong for Lulu anymore. Tars does have that Tian Lang, does have that aggressive first turn composition style. So I think against, in his matchup, it should be good for him. But I don't personally have him favored for uh, a finalist spot. Okay. So we have Jack. Jack got third place. Jack is a Gianna. I don't think there's too much to know about Jack. I personally don't know a lot about this player. I know he's strong. I know he has a pretty good contending uh, on the ladder as well. But I didn't feel like there was anything too standout and too scary watching him play in APAC Cup. Maybe he pops something out, out of nowhere. Maybe he has incredible strategies. It's just not something that I've seen so far in the tournaments. Uh, to be fair, though, I did put him in third place in APAC. I, got, I managed to get all three of the APAC predictions correct. However, I'm not confident in Jack going into uh, into World Finals because, obviously, this is a lot harder of a tournament now. We have eight right. of the actual best players in the world. Yep. Yep. <sighs> okay, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot, that's a lot of words. <laughs> that's a lot of words. Okay, okay. Second baby. Second baby. Second baby, Nephthys, Gianna. We saw the Alexandra. We've yep. seen the Ragdoll as well. Second baby effectively plays turn two and turn one, but I don't think he is able to adjust his draft as effectively as some of the other players. He does play very well. He does play very well and has a fairly good opportunity to change up the drafting style between turn one, turn two, very defensive, very offensive. Um, but it's hard, man. You're against Pink Roy. You're against right. one of the best and most aggressive best drafters best, in yeah. the world. So it's going to be it's going to be tough for him. But I think he does have the tools in his kit to really get out there. And he's got dad coaching, him, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, four baby is uh, is a legend. This is honestly a legend in my regard. Uh, we have Madreem D. Madreem D, we saw him very effectively use Pontos. We saw a lot of standard non-LD cleaving in there as well. Madreem D, very effective against, uh, you know, pretty much everybody's, like, safe defensive comps, but also being able to outspeed or control really challenging speeds. I think he's a pretty good contender to look out for. If anyone is able to be diligent, I really think Madreem D has got a good chance here. And then our final uh, spot here in the World Finals, we have Ismu from the Europe region. I don't know too much about uh, Ismu. Honestly, he plays on Global as well. He's in uh, He's in the Red Guild. Uh, but Ismu played fairly well in the tournament, right? In, in Europe Cup, he managed to adjust his draft to find what was missing and also be able to overtake that slower comp that Levert had. Um, couldn't beat Pink Roid out. Pink Roid is absolutely incredibly strong and very, very good. But that doesn't discount Ismu. His Pontos user is a very effective Pontos drafts, but also utilizes units like Praha really well, utilizes the counter pick super well. He just has a lot of different capabilities that I think are really strong. And I... I do think Ismu has a good chance as well. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So funny enough, listening to your your praise on these people, Huda, this is going to be extremely hard for people to essentially decide. You know what is you know what is the one that's going to you know take the win at the very end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I got a couple of questions for you. Um, I get the first thing I got to start with because this is going to be part of. It's going to somehow bleed into the rest of the questions. So let's just get it out the way right now. You talked about Pink Red Diligent kind of being your top two there. I got to put you on the spot, my man. You got to make a choice, right? People are leaning on you to get the, you know, 500 crystals to get the gift card. Uh, who is uh, your uh, finalist? Who, who's going to be the one that's going to be taking the crown? I think Diligent wins. And I think, but I want, I, I'm, I'm cheering for Big V. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I think, I think there's a very, very close matchup between Big V, Pink Roy, and Diligent. The three of them can match up extremely well at a high level. I do think it'll be one of the, uh, two of those three in the finals. Um, I think that I do think it's going to be diligent though. Diligent, it, it's really hard. You look at diligent, you look at his box. He has GG picks. Like if he can last pick Tian Lang Volantis, if he can pick Hei Gang Volantis, if he can pick Chiana Volantis, like there are a lot of things you really, really right. got to RNG or can't yeah. fight. Like you saw his last match in APAC Cup versus second baby. He GG'd him and draft so hard. We saw that Volantis come out and we knew the game was over. Even Second Baby knew the game was over. He saw the Volantis and he he his head just he was just right. like it's over. <laughs> yeah. he, he looked at the yeah. screen and he's oh, like, I shit. lost. Like there's there's just nothing you can do in that situation. Yeah. For me, it's Dillinton takes it, but Pink Roid is gonna is gonna be somewhere up there. Like I D, Pink Roid is my dark horse. He's the one that's gonna kind of surprise people while Diligent Diligent could do he, he's just so good at everything he does. I, I feel like even though Pink Roid doesn't have the monster box to compete with him. He like you said it before uh, when you introduced him that he can 
he can play against just about everything. He can adapt really well when it comes to his play style and other people's play styles and whatnot. So I think he can he can really shake it up and and possibly give him a run for his money here. So is okay. Wait, can I guess oh. what your next question is? Go ahead. Go ahead. Is it who's the dark horse? Oh my! You're so good. <laughs> you're so good. <laughs> I'm looking at my own list. I'm like, oh shoot! I just kind of get away. Wow, Madreem D. The answer is Madreem D. I okay. think Madreem D is the okay. dark horse. I don't. I don't think Pink Roy is a dark horse because I think Pink Roy is actually favored in a lot of in a lot of settings. I think a lot of people will pick Pink Roy over Second Baby and have a very strong standing for him because of how strong he is and because of how much we see him play on on Twitch. Okay. Okay. Now, now this one's going to be not so much prediction aspect, but I want to talk about like a little past or a little history here. Um, you had a chance to mm-hmm. commentate on, on all of these things. On all of uh, the eight people here, uh, out mm-hmm. of all the play styles that you've seen, everybody that you know play, which which one was the most that was like kind of surprising to you? Which one just threw you off? I was like, wow, I didn't think he had that kind of like in his arsenal. You're like, what do you? What oh, do you Big think? V, hundred percent. Big V, okay, okay. No, nobody, nobody had seen the Tableau Nikki Ethna. Right. Like nobody had seen that kind of cleave with how much damage it dealt. Dude. That Nikki was so fast and violent and, and violent. did so much she just obliterated the whole team yeah that was that, that had to have been the fastest match in the entire tournament diligent had one yeah. match where he cleaved really fast but big v tableau nikki jemire instantly obliterated somebody yeah. i was like oh i was i was blown away i was like wow it was good i, I, I it i've never me, seen somebody so fast it reminded me of uh I mean, we, I've seen a couple of people from the age of Pacifica, but it reminded me of like 2017 and tree you know doing some bestec leaves back in the day Mm-hmm. Um, like that, that kind of crazy faster. So yeah, it was good. It was good to see that. It was good to see that. Yeah. So. No, I definitely, I definitely, definitely on Big V for that one. Most gotcha. the play style that interested me the most, or the matches that were the most interesting to, for, for me, was definitely Big V. Good deal. Good deal. Well, yeah, man. I, uh, I honestly, as as much as I wanted to like throw a lot of questions here, I, I wanted to keep this video short and sweet. I just wanted to give people, you know, an opportunity to kind of you know hear it from the mouth of the person that been you know basically studying these you know you, uh, these guys mm-hmm. day in and day out here and try to get their opinion on it. And uh, any last words you wanted to share for the community as far as the predictions go? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know a lot of you guys want to go for high seed because high seed is like definitely favored in this situation when you look at like raw statistics and stuff. But I think when it comes to choosing who you think will win for world finals, I honestly think you should just go with your gut. Like as much as I can give you information, as much as stoic and all the other content creators can give you information on like this player can do this, this player can do this. It's like, Summoners War is a game where at the end of the day, all of these players are playing within such a small margin that RNG is a significant factor to whether or not they will win or lose. Um, obviously, if you make significant errors like misdrafting or misbanning, you're going to be unfavored in those situations. But if all of these players show up on their A game and they're all playing to the best of their ability, then it's going to be a couple coin flips here and there between certain matches. So yeah. if you think is Moose going to beat Tars or if you think that Diligent's not going to make it or if you think Jack's going to be the SWC champion, vote for it you know do what you believe you know it's like the Yu-Gi-Oh. believe in the heart of the believe cards the whatever you believe <laughs> yeah. in you just just go with it just all go right with it. so once again I, fam, I, I don't think i mentioned at the beginning of the video but i will I'll put a little annotation here uh for those of you guys that want to participate in this giveaway all you have to do is leave a comment section in the comment uh comment in the comment section down below basically stating what is going to be uh our swc world finals champion okay and basically what we're going to be doing is i'm going to pick eight winners you guys uh, each of the eight winners will get 500 crystals but if you happen to guess the 2021 champion uh we'll also do a 25 dollar gift card giveaway so we'll be upwards of 200 dollars gift cards uh 200 dollars gift cards if you guys uh are on point there when it comes to your predictions here so uh once again once in love thank you so much for coming on board and doing this collaboration with me i do appreciate your time of course, I have one more announcement to make. Since no, we're, uh, sorry, it's not loud. No, nope. nope, we're done. That's it. We hit the 15 minute mark. Over. I need you to get over. Got, that's YouTube it. YouTube video is too long. We it's need to make over. another one. It's over. <laughs> hit it. It's over for sure. Um, so, as some of you know, last uh, last month, a couple weeks ago, was my five year partner anniversary on Twitch, as well as my six years on streaming of streaming. Um, I'll be doing giveaways throughout this entire month uh, on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And Discord. So I'll be giving away crystals. I'll be giving away some codes and some gift cards. Um, obviously, it's, you know, Mr. Mr. Challenge always puts uh, puts our socials below. But mm-hmm. uh, keep your eye out for those. And uh, hopefully, you guys win a lot of stuff this month because there's a lot of people doing a lot of giveaways. Yeah, I mean, you're, you technically your your information has already been down below. It's been there alongside a lot of uh, content creators for for quite a few years. Yeah, but for I, a while, it's been there for a while. It's been there for a while. That being said, though, if you guys don't know, take a look at the the, the YouTube description up below. We literally have. Uh, a ton of content creators, some amazing content creators all across the world that have been supporting this game for quite some time. But I need to be a little selfish right now. Put them aside and just focus on one. And that's the ones that love right here. Go ahead and check them out on YouTube, on Twitch. Has fantastic content. 
Uh, I can't wait till you guys see it. If you guys are new to the channel, haven't seen them already, uh, just amazing content there. It's super smart. Love it. I learned a lot from it, okay? That's going to be it, fam. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and Once in Love with Childish Place. Check it out. Take care, and we'll see you guys in 10 days for the SWC World Cup.